Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Rachel Takeman and I'm trying to better myself in 2020 by tackling a new goal every month and tracking it all through YouTube videos. Thanks for tuning in to another video. As you all know, my April goal is self-care and I'm trying to do something every day to focus on self-care and mental health. This month has been a tough one as an essential worker during this pandemic. It's been tough to focus on my self-care every night when I just want to lay around and do nothing after work every night. However, even though I haven't been perfect at this, I have enjoyed the extra push for me to read before bed or relax with a face mask at night or something like that. And there's still a couple weeks left of the month for me to continue focusing on all the self-care activities I mentioned in last week's video. Last week I shared that I wanted my self-care activities to be something other than just watching TV. I find that when I'm tired at night watching Watching TV is the easiest way for me to just relax and unwind. And that's not always a bad thing, but I want to find other activities that can be just as relaxing, but may actually fuel me and recharge me rather than just help me to unwind. So I'm working on focusing on those other things that I mentioned last week. But for this week, I want to tell you about my favorites when I do just need to sit down and mindlessly watch something. So if you're looking for something new to watch or a good reminder of a show to rewatch, stay tuned. And if you guys have any suggestions for TV shows or movies that that I might like, let me know in the comments down below. TV shows are my favorite. I love getting to know the characters really well and seeing how the story evolves season after season. I think TV shows really show the creativity of the writers, of how they can go season to season with storylines and keep coming up with new ideas, not knowing when the story will end. I don't watch nearly as many movies as I do TV shows, but I do have a couple of favorites to highlight. My favorite movie of all time is The Time Traveler's Wife. I've seen this movie a few times and every time I'm just an emotional wreck. I'd say it's in the chick flick genre, but it's more complicated and less predictable than your typical boy meets girl story. I have this movie on DVD and it's not on any streaming service, but you can rent it on YouTube, iTunes, or Amazon Prime for $3.99. I travel through time. I can't control it. It just happens. I wish it didn't. You're back. Did I miss Christmas? My other favorite movie is my Deserted Island movie. This is the movie that I can watch over and over and over again without getting sick of it. And that movie is Mamma Mia. I can't even count the amount of times that I've seen this one. And I've also seen it as a play on Broadway. This is another movie that I have on DVD, is not on a streaming service, but can be rented online. And now there's a sequel to watch. Sam's the one. I know he is. I've never felt like this before. <laughs> Honey, honey, how he thrills me, uh-huh, honey, honey. Other than these two all-time favorites, I have a lot of other movies that I just like a lot. I've been watching a lot of the Disney classics on Disney Plus lately, and I have a few Christmas favorites, but I'm more of a TV show person. If you guys have movie suggestions for me, please leave them in the comments down below. So on to TV shows, which is my true favorite. My number one favorite TV show of all time is Game of Thrones. Justin and I jumped on the Game of Thrones bandwagon pretty late in the game, but we've been a fan for about a year and a half, and we've watched it start to finish four times since then. And now we're reading the books. It's no surprise that we like Game of Thrones, and I'm sure this isn't the first you've heard of the show. Game of Thrones is a cultural phenomenon, and it's like no other. But if you haven't heard of it or haven't watched it yet, I am envious of you. I wish I could go back and just watch it all again for the very first time, to react to all the amazing moments again for the first time. Game of Thrones is an HBO TV show based on George R.R. Martin's book series, A Song of Ice and Fire. It takes place in a fictional world, and it beautifully combines the fantasy genre with real life stories. Now I'm not a huge fan of fantasy. I've never gotten into Star Wars or Harry Potter or anything like that. But if you love fantasy, you'll love those aspects of Game of Thrones. They do it so well. And if you don't like the fantasy genre, Game of Thrones is about so much more than just fantasy. It's about the political drama, the power dynamics, and just the family stories. So if you haven't watched it yet, Game of Thrones is available to stream seasons one through eight, start to finish on HBO. One king, seven kingdoms. Do you think honor keeps them in line? Do you think it's honor that's keeping the peace? It's fear, fear and blood. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win, you die. There is no middle ground.
My number two favorite show that previously was my number one before I watched Game of Thrones is Parenthood. Again, this is a show that I've watched multiple times all the way through and I've recommended it to so many people. It originally aired on NBC and it has six seasons, all of which are streaming on Hulu. Parenthood has an all-star cast including Lauren Graham, Dax Shepard, Craig T. Nelson, and Mae Whitman. And not only is Parenthood an amazing series that tackles so many important issues in real life family drama, but it has the most perfect TV series finale that I've ever seen. I don't know about you, but whenever I start watching a series, if it doesn't have a good ending, it could ruin the whole show for me. Or if it was taken off the air unexpectedly and didn't have a chance to write a good ending, that's such a disappointment. So Parenthood will not disappoint. If you loved Friday Night Lights or if you watch This Is Us right now, you will love Parenthood. No, but not like that, like, like with a partner type of, slow dancing type of thing, not like... Hey, you guys, Drew's got a little dance coming up. I'm just showing him a few moves. You know what, Drew? You might even want to throw some big stuff, you know, some of the... Okay, so Game of Thrones and Parenthood are my top two by far, but I've got more to run through. I don't think I can really put them in order because some of these shows are my most rewatchable shows, but some I really love, but I don't feel the need to rewatch. So the next one I'll tell you about is Grey's Anatomy. Grey's was one of the first shows that I really binge watched because I didn't find it until high school and it already had eight seasons out, but Grey's Anatomy is like none other. It's on its 16th season and really just keeps putting out amazing seasons and amazing storylines. It's still on the air right now but seasons 1 through 15 are streaming on Netflix. I have five rules, memorize them. Rule number one, don't bother sucking up. I already hate you, that's not gonna change. Trauma protocol, phoneless pagers. Nurses will page you. You answer every page at a run. A run, that's rule number two. And if you've already seen Grey's Anatomy and you really liked it, go watch Private Practice, which is a spin-off show featuring one of the characters of Grey's. Private Practice is also on Netflix. And if you're into those types of drama shows, Shonda Rhimes, the creator of Grey's Anatomy, also created Scandal, which is another super amazing show on Netflix. Another one of my early favorites is Gilmore Girls. Again, this one's been around for a while, but it just doesn't get old. Nothing like following the lives of the iconic mother-daughter duo Lorelai and Rory. And now there's an extra mini-series to watch too. You can watch Gil Gilmore Girls on Netflix and you can watch the four-part reunion series Gilmore Girls A Day in the Life on Netflix as well. What do you need? Hot tea? Coffee? Lip gloss. Aha. Uh -huh. I have vanilla chocolate strawberry and toasted marshmallow. Anything in there not resembling a breakfast cereal? Yes. It has no smell but it changes colors with your mood. Another show I really love is The Crown. This one's a Netflix original series with three seasons so far, and it does not disappoint. It follows the life of Queen Elizabeth II, and it is so well made. The casting is perfect, the costumes are perfect, and it does a really good job of being historically accurate and filling in the holes of what we don't really know about the royal family. You understand the titles, they're not the job. She is the job. Loving her protecting her. She is the essence of your duty. So aside from all the drama shows that I mentioned that I love, my other love in the TV show world is comedy. I love a lighthearted 20 minute episode that just makes you happy. So again, these next six shows are not in any particular order, they're just my favorite comedy TV shows. The first I have to mention is probably the most obvious, The Office. Who doesn't love The Office? But if you've tried watching the first couple episodes and gave up, try again. I didn't love the first six to eight episodes the first time I watched it, but stick with it until you love the characters and then there's no going back. Plus, now Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey have a podcast called Office Ladies that has behind the scenes info on every episode. So now there's even more incentive to watch The Office or to rewatch it with them. Hold on, judges in session, what is the problem here? You put my stuff in jello again. <laughs> That's real professional. Thanks. It's the third time and it wasn't funny the first All two right. times I did. And if you love The Office, you probably also love Parks and Recreation. Filmed in a similar mockumentary style, Parks and Rec has some of your favorite actors. Amy Poehler, Aubrey Plaza, Nick Offerman, Chris Pratt. Amazing. It's another super popular rewatch on Netflix and it's one my husband and I are rewatching now since we just finished rewatching Game of Thrones again. I've said this to you before and I know it makes you uncomfortable. Oh boy. But you're thoughtful and you're brilliant and your ambiguous ethnic blend perfectly represents the dream of the American melting pot. 
another show I love that unfortunately is not on Netflix anymore is Friends. I watched Friends before Netflix streaming was popular and then rewatched it a few more times once it was on Netflix. I mean Friends is just a classic. I can rewatch the show starting anywhere in its 10 seasons and immediately fall right back in it. I don't want to be single, okay? I just, I just, I just want to be married again. <laughs> I just want a million dollars. Next up, New Girl. I mean, Zoe Deschanel, need I say more? This show is hilarious and quirky and it's a must watch. Whoever's holding the feeling stick has permission to say whatever he or she is feeling without being judged. Have you watched The Good Place yet? If not, you are missing out on some comedy gold. It was written by Mike Schur, who also wrote The Office and co-created Parks and Rec and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And if that's not enough to convince you, Ted Danson, Kristen Bell, and Maya Rudolph are all in this show. This show is super witty and clever and tackles the controversial subject of the afterlife with a lighthearted nature. The whole series is four seasons and it's streaming on Netflix. Somebody royally forked up. Somebody forked up. Why can't I say fork? If you're trying to curse, you can't hear. I guess a lot of people in this neighborhood don't like it, so it's prohibited. That's bullshit. And the last show that I have to mention is Schitt's Creek. This one is a new one to me, so I've only watched it once, but I can't wait to watch it again. The show aired on CBC in Canada, but it's streaming on Netflix now. They just aired the sixth and final season, so it should be on Netflix in October. This show features writer-actor, father-son duo Dan and Eugene Levy, and also Catherine O'Hara. Remember her from Home Alone? If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend this one. See? See what? Alexis seems to think you like me more. Alexis, don't be ridiculous. It's exactly the kind of paranoia that makes me wary of spending time with you. So that about sums up my favorite movies and TV shows. Again, if you have any recommendations for me to watch, please drop a comment down below. And let me know if you like this style of video. My normal videos have been all about my progress with my goals, but this month and last month's goals were a little harder to track and vlog, so I'm trying out some different type of content. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my videos every week. If you like this video, click that thumbs up button and click the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. This week's shout out goes to Nettie Lou Who. Thanks so much for watching my videos and for commenting, Lou. Make sure you all tune in next week to to hear more about my progress with my April goal over the course of the month. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I'll see you next week.